Hello everyone. Today we are going to talk about the number one metric of every art business. This metric will forever change the way you think about your art business and it will get you to success faster. All right, I'm really excited about this presentation because this applies to any artist or photographer at any level of success, whether you've sold a lot or you're just starting out and you've sold nothing. What we're talking about here today is going to really help you hone in on what you should be focusing on so that you are focusing on the right things, the right levers that are going to make your business grow faster and get to success faster. So first, let's talk about how businesses grow. It's not magical, mysterious, nor dumb luck. It is actually mathematical and trackable. Businesses grow because specific metrics are moving in the right direction, whether you deliberately focused on those metrics or not. And so what I mean by that is some people are, you know, uh, just doing random things every day. And it might be one thing this month or one thing the next month. And sometimes, you know, they get a sales pop, like they, they randomly get a, a big sale or, or something like that happens. Or maybe throughout their career, they've gotten sales here and there, and they're not really sure how it happened at those points. Well, the reason that any success has happened at any point in the business is because specific metrics we're moving in the right direction. It might have only happened for one little period of time, but the right metrics were moving in the right direction. And if you learn and understand what those are, then you can push them again and create more success. So every business owner needs to pinpoint the key metrics of their business and then focus on them. So success is actually something that you manufacture. You don't wait around for, all right? Too many people start a business and they're just waiting around. They're like, oh, if I just do some uh, SEO, some search engine optimization, or if I just post some social media, you know, if I just do some things like, isn't something going to happen? Like, shouldn't my sales just pop one day? No, that, that's never going to happen. The way that it works is success is something that's manufactured. This is how professionals run businesses. You identify the metrics of the business and then you push those specific things and you measure them. And if they're going in the right direction, then success is going to take care of itself. The sales are going to happen. The good news is we've done this for you. This is all we do here at Art Storefronts, obviously. We, we have one focus. We help artists and photographers build their own fine art businesses. So we know what the key metric of your business is. So look here, this is a sales funnel. If you're not familiar with a sales funnel, um, you start with the highest level of, you know, traffic uh, and, and, and whatever that is, right? So it could be web traffic or it could be foot traffic that you get maybe at an art fair. But those are your prospects. Think about the people who are walking by your booth. Those are prospects, okay? The people who randomly visit your website are prospects. They're, 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 they're leads. They're sort of leads, right? They're prospects. Now, you need these, and I have the 1,000 number here in order to get them one level down in the funnel to get these qualified leads, right? So of the thousand people who walk by your booth or who come to your website, maybe only 10% or so will become qualified leads, all right? And then after once you have qualified leads, you can finally get these, which is what you really want, are the sales. So you can't get the sales without getting qualified leads, and you can't get the qualified leads without having prospects, okay? The key metrics that drive growth of any business can be charted out mathematically in an equation. That's kind of what I've done here. This is a very simple three metrics, prospects, qualified leads, and sales. But if you, if you are measuring these numbers, you will easily be able to see what trajectory your business is going on. Are you actually going in the right direction? Is your business on the path to growth or is it not? So the number one metric for you, for every artist and photographer, is actually the number of qualified leads. This is the one metric that matters. This metric can forever change your business if you focus on it. It is extremely powerful to, under, to think about one metric, to focus on one metric when you are an entrepreneur or a business owner. It simplifies things radically, okay? It takes all of these things and you know these concepts in your head of what you believe or think you need to do and it brings it down to one metric. If this metric is going in the right direction, generally your business is going to be going in the right direction. It's going to be growing. You're going to be having more consistent sales. So this is the one metric that matters. 
So let's look back at the funnel that we just kind of looked at there. So we've got our prospects and I have highlighted the qualified leads, right? This is the number that really matters because if you're generating traffic anywhere, you know, and, ev and all of you have probably experienced this at one point or another, or you will, maybe you go to an art fair in person and you've got a booth, but nobody walks into your booth. Okay. All you, all, you never generated a qualified lead. So all you had was foot traffic and that's not going to help you. That's why this metric is the metric that matters. Same thing with web traffic. You might have a bunch of web traffic, but none of those are turning into qualified leads. So it's just vanity traffic, okay? From there, you will wanna have engaged qualified leads. Now I've added this step into the funnel because once you've generated qualified leads, that you need to keep them engaged. And that's what marketing is for. That's the purpose of doing ongoing marketing. You can't just generate uh, an email, you know, uh, uh, or collect emails at an art fair or on your website and do nothing. You can't just collect sales when you do an art fair. You can't sell at art fairs or anywhere in person and then do nothing after the fact. You have to do continual marketing. That's how you turn leads into customers. That's how you turn customers into repeat buyers and collectors, okay? So once you have engaged qualified leads, those are people who are actually engaging with your marketing. They're, they're engaging with your social media posts, um, which means they're liking them, they're commenting on them. They are definitely seeing them. They are opening your emails that you are sending out when you're sending out new email content. They are sharing, they're doing things like that. Those are engaged qualified leads, all right? So you're turning qualified leads into engaged qualified leads, and then the engaged qualified leads ultimately turn into sales. So you want to generate more qualified leads and more sales will come. If you don't, you will not grow and you will never have consistent sales. That's the biggest problem. So notice here, I say, if you generate more qualified leads, more sales will come. Because even if you aren't engaging them and doing all of the proper marketing, you're leaving a lot of money on the table. But if you if you just focus on generating just a ton of qualified leads, your numbers will go in the right direction, okay? They will go in the right direction. That's why you have to focus on that. It's also the hardest thing to do. It's the thing that's going to take your most focus, your most time, 90% of your time that's spent on your business should be spent on this forever, forever. Not just this week, not just next week, forever. This is where your mind should be focused on all the time because the rest will take care of itself if you can do that. So let's talk about what is a qualified lead. I'm using this terminology qualified. A lead in general is someone who has A, expressed interest in your product, and B, you have obtained their contact information, preferably their email address, all right? That would just be a lead. It's someone that you've got their contact information in some way you have, in other words, you have a way of communicating with them on an ongoing basis, all right? That's what differentiates a prospect from a lead. You've got their contact information and you can contact them and show them marketing uh, messages, all right? Now, a qualified lead, big difference, is someone who shares the key characteristics of your buyers, right? So um, let's say there's a lead who has no money and they're broke. Well, that person is never going to buy from you. So it doesn't really matter whether you have their email address uh, or their contact information. They're just a lead. They're not really anything. A qualified lead is someone who might have a budget, right? Somebody who is uh, has a deep emotional connection with your work or something of that nature. But there is a difference between qualified leads because they are people that might actually buy one day and you need to define what that is. So in order to do that, um, you need to know the characteristics, the demographics, you know, anything you can about, about your buyers or about the people who are really interested in your work. Most characteristics are similar for photographers and artists, okay? so. If you're selling art, in general, people are going to need to have a budget. They can't be broke. They need to have an interest and an emotional connection to your subject matter. And the general location needs to be um, applicable. What I mean by that is, you know, if you're selling art, uh, if you're in the U.S., you know, the leads can't all be from Australia. It's going to be a lot harder to buy the work from you if they're in Australia and they have to deal with things like sh higher shipping costs or currency or whatever it might be, right? It's just, there's a little bit more friction regardless of 
whether you have any of those things resolved when somebody's in a different country. So there, there, there tends to be a, 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 a higher return on investment when focusing on uh, uh, prospects or, or leads that are in your general area. It might be your city, it might be your state, or it might be your country. Okay, so the, generally these apply to everyone. Now the characteristics that will vary might be the extent of the budget. For example, if you are selling limited editions or only like original paintings and you're a painter, then you have higher price points. So your, your, the, the, the clientele that you're going after or a qualified lead must have a certain type of a budget. They must be sort of a high net worth individual. It can't just be like a 25 year old a uh, recent graduate from college who might buy a hundred or two hundred dollar print but would never buy a two thousand dollar limited edition or something of that nature so there will be characteristics that vary that you want to define maybe maybe your art uh you know applies towards people with uh you know like maybe it's gender related or people that live in a very specific area like Austin, Texas, if you only photograph images from Austin, Texas, it might be people who live there or who got married there. So you're gonna to wanna to understand that as much as possible. It's important to understand what a qualified lead is for you so that you can just go get more of them, okay? So spend some time thinking about that and over time, you're gonna be able to define it more. You may not have it perfect right now and that's totally normal. You need to learn more and more about who your qualified leads are and, and define that over time. So your main focus here is to get more qualified leads, obviously, right? You just need to get more of these. You need to understand where you are currently getting them if you're already selling and just scale that, okay? So if you're already getting qualified leads somewhere, let's say you're doing in-person shows or your, your art is up at a restaurant and you keep getting more sales from that, I don't care where it is. If you are currently selling anywhere, that means you are getting qualified leads from that location, okay? You need to understand everywhere that that is happening and you need to pour gasoline on it and scale that. You don't need to do anything else. You need to do that first, okay? So how do you know if a lead is actually qualified? Especially when it comes to web traffic. It comes from analytics, you need to follow a report, all right? So I'm gonna show you a report here um, to give you an idea of what that is. So in the art storefronts uh, analytics section, we've got a report here called The Conversion Doctor, and I'm looking at one of our artists' websites <clears throat> during a certain period of time. And you can see here that we have the contact created conversion rate, okay? So what this is doing is this is, is measuring the number of people who actually gave a buying signal on the website. How are we doing that? We are offering people right up front 20% off of his art, okay? So what happens here is that when a visitor comes to the site, if they are given immediately a 20% off their first order, you are going to know right away whether that person will ever buy from you. That's why this is so important. So in the case of art and photography, somebody who is qualified that actually likes your work and may buy it someday is going to say, yeah, I'll take that 20% off. Are you joking? That's amazing. And the people who will never buy won't do it. They'll just close it right out. They don't care because why would they ever want to save 20%? Just think about that for a second. So what we know here is that that number should be around 5% or higher in order to be healthy. And it's so important because this is the way that you can understand whether a traffic source is actually generating qualified leads or you are wasting your time, right? So we can see here that his Facebook activities are doing really well. He's got a 13, almost a 14% contact created conversion rate, okay? And you can see here if you add up both of these, these Facebook leads, and you kind of average them out, you can see, sure enough, these people are getting to the product page, they're adding to the shopping cart, and they are checking out. So the whole funnel is actually working. This is a visual representation of the funnel going from left to right. So you can see how it totally works out. And then the same thing goes for these here. Now, this one is a little bit lower, it's almost a 5%, but that's okay. It's Google organic, it's, it's, uh, 
uh, search engine search engine optimization traffic. It's probably a little bit less qualified, but it's still getting a 5%. And sure enough, it's going all the way through and people are checking out. So by being able to have a report like this, you're able to know whether you're spending time in the right areas or you're not. So if you actually see 0% and you see, you know, maybe 500 to 1000 visits, and you can change the date range and look at a, at a at a bigger sample size, and you're not seeing that people are actually opting in and taking your discount, your free discount, then you know that that is not a quality traffic source. So that's why this is so important, okay? The vital importance of a lead capture pop-up. Yes, a pop-up, that's why. Some people are like, I don't like pop-ups. I don't care if you don't like pop-ups, you're missing the point, everyone is using them. And there is a reason for it. It is a quality signal. Otherwise, you can go ahead and fly blind all you want. You'll never know whether your business is going in the right direction. And I guarantee you that if you're one of those people, you're going to have major problems with your business. You're not going to know what levers to push on, what traffic levers are actually working. And it's going to be very difficult. And uh, it's, it's not going to go away until you start doing what the rest of the marketing world is doing. If you don't have a, met, a way to measure qualified leads, you are literally flying blind. Vanity traffic is worthless. It's very easy to get and it's a total waste of your time. Vanity traffic is traffic that doesn't convert in any way. You don't see them opting in to your offer and then you don't see them coming all the way through. It makes you feel good. Uh, other sorts of vanity sorts of uh, engagement is people who engage on your social media posts. They like them, they do all that stuff, but they never click on through to your website. If you have a proper romance uh, social media post, if you're doing those correctly, that's just, those are people that don't care enough. They'll never buy, so it doesn't really matter. So vanity traffic is worthless and surprisingly, it's really easy to get. So whether you're buying Facebook ads or anything like that, it is really easy for Facebook to get you traffic and to get you people to your website that are worthless. But those mean nothing to you. You have to get qualified leads. So how do you measure your number of qualified leads? Well, in person, it's your number of new customers. So the people who bought from you and you collected their email address, right? Because it's not going to be a lead unless you have a way of sending them marketing messages in the future. So you have to make sure that you've collected their email address. All right. So it would be the number of new customers plus the number of new email list signups. All right. And I say count, you can count roughly 70 to 80% of them because the reason I'm considering these qualified leads is that if they've been in your booth and they've looked at your price points and all that type of stuff and they, and they want to be on your list and they want to be updated, we're generally going to assume that you know, 70, 80% of them are probably good leads. Um, and then, you know, the other people might just be lucky loose or whatever. You can use whatever percentage you want there. You could use 50%, you could use 90%. The point is just 70 to 80 is probably fine. And, uh, uh, and, and that's how you'll know. All right, then from the website, the number of lead capture tool signups, but only when doing lead capture according to best practices. This is very important because I've seen people change the offer. They no longer offer 20% off it, their first purchase, okay? And instead they do something like, you know, download free iPhone backgrounds or phone backgrounds, or they, they say like, enter a giveaway, um, enter your email to do a giveaway. That's terrible. You have to understand if you do those things, you're going to ruin this because guess what's gonna happen? All the people who want a free giveaway or who will actually, you know, take the time to, to use your image as a, as a phone background uh, are going to be the ones who opt in. And those are not going to be the quality people. Most of the quality people won't do that. They'll just dismiss it right on the spot. The quality people who may ever buy want the discount. They want to save money. And that's why you're doing it. You're not doing it just to get vanity email addresses. You're doing it to get you know, qualified leads on your list and to know that you actually did. So all you need to do is take all these, add them up, and you have your approximate number of qualified leads. It doesn't need to be a perfect, you know, a perfect number, right? Because we're going to approximate this part right here. Um, but if you use the same methodology to add these up every month, 
every week, every month, however you're tracking it, then you're going to be able to track this metric on a regular basis. And, uh, and that's all you need to do. So let's take a second here now and let's audit ourselves. How many qualified leads did you generate yesterday or last month or last year? Think about that. Do you even know the number? Do you even know what number that is? It's the only metric that matters, guys. Do you know the number? You need to know what that number is. If you're disappointed with how your business did last year, it will directly correlate to the amount of qualified leads that you generated. What tasks are you spending time on that do not efficiently generate more qualified leads? What can you do next month to focus on this number one metric and push off the tasks that don't matter yet, okay? Take a look at this here. There's a big difference between a to-do list, in other words, all the things that you could do and the things that you should do, and your success list, which are the things that you should do, only the things that you should do. Guys, I know you don't have a lot of time. All I hear from everybody is, I don't have enough time, I don't have enough time, I wanna spend more time creating. Then you should be the, the first people, the first people to have a success list and only a success list. Your could do is probably all the things you're spending time on, tinkering with your website, adding media types or toggling things off and on. How many sizes am I offering? You know, how many blog posts do I have? Or is my, you know, do I need to add more pages to my website? No. Do I need to do more SEO work? No, you don't. You can chip away at all that stuff over time. But the stuff that you should do is the stuff that is going to generate more qualified leads. If it is not something that is going to do that, then it is not something that needs to be done right now. Let me tell you guys something, folks. When you generate enough qualified leads, people will be banging down your door to buy from you. On your, even if you have a, a web page with, with just an email address on it, they will click on your email address and they will email you. They will be pulling the art out of you. You need to generate more qualified leads. That's the only thing that's gonna do anything. So think about whether you are operating off a to-do list and whether you can actually create a success list. So how will you generate more qualified leads? How do you do it, okay? Well, as I said earlier, if you've been selling your art already, chart out what has been and is working for you in terms of acquiring customers. The goal is to build upon that. Do not abandon what has been working for you. I see people do this all the time. They go, oh, now that I'm selling online, maybe I don't have to do you know, art fairs anymore or gallery openings or basically whatever has been working for you for the last couple of years. You feel like you can abandon that, sit back in your home and do nothing and then the, the sales are gonna come to you. No, 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 do not do that. You cannot abandon what has been working for you. It is hard enough for any business to get something working, to get traction. Whatever works for you is what works for you. You may not be able to get anything else to work. So you need to amplify everything that you're already doing and then build upon it, okay? So that's where marketing strategies come into play. That's how you can amplify all of your customer acquisition that you're currently doing to get more sales, more success, more consistency from the things that are already working, all right? It's not to redo everything. It is to amplify what you're doing. The next thing for, for which applies to everybody, whether you have been selling or not, is to generate a list of ideas now, today, and test them, all right? Then rinse and repeat. So the mindset here is to fire a lot of arrows, okay? Try a lot of things. Not the time to worry about what scales or the things that you don't wanna do. I don't wanna be going around to art fairs. I don't wanna be doing this. That doesn't seem like fun for my life. That's not the mindset that you have when you are starting out or you're trying to test new ideas. You need to do everything. You need to do the things that you don't want to do, okay? Because it doesn't matter right now. Once you get traction and once you scale, you can hire someone to do those things. So you're not committing to doing anything for the rest of your life here. You're simply trying to fire a lot of arrows. In other words, test a lot of different strategies in order to get qualified leads. And in order to quickly find ones that have promise, that are actually generating qualified leads for you. You just need to find traction somewhere in getting qualified leads, okay? What will work for you will be a little, little different than everyone else. Everything that's, that's 
that that's going to work for you is going to be slightly different, although similar to everyone else. And that's why I say things like, if you're just starting out and you don't have an, an email list uh, or social following to leverage, show your art in person. Okay, get out in person. Um, art shows are a great way to do that. It'll be more effective. Uh, it'll be faster and you'll get quicker learnings than sitting behind a computer. You simply need to learn what the characteristics of your audience are, your qualified leads, so that you can better target them. So go get some prints made, show them to the public and make some sales. That's what you're going to be able to do to, to learn all of these things. All right. So, so go to an art fair. Go, it doesn't matter where, where, uh, where you do it. Like if you can get in front of people um, at, a, at a restaurant, at a hotel lobby, anywhere you can get in front of people and actually show your art or show prints of your work and start talking to people and observing people and actually making some sales. I don't care if you discount it all the way down. In fact, you should be very aggressive when you do this because the point here is to find traction. It's not even to make a huge profit right? You can make a profit later, maybe after the first time, after you offer a really aggressive promotion there, then the next time you don't, you know? So, but all you need to do is find these places and figure out where the qualified leads are going to come from. If it does not generate qualified leads, then you either need to stop doing that or uh, if, if you know the qualified leads are there, but you just couldn't get them, you need to maybe adjust your strategy. But either way, at the end of the day, it needs you need to end up with generating qualified leads. So the art, the art storefronts marketing plan and technology will take care of the rest for you. This is so important. You need to have the right technology and a marketing strategy, a marketing plan ongoing. The website is already built to convert the maximum number of visitors into buyers. It's gonna do the work for you. You just need to bring the qualified leads in and it will do the rest. The marketing plan or a proper marketing plan is designed to nurture these qualified leads you acquire to build a deeper connection. It's going to eventually bring these leads to make their first purchase and repeat purchases. And it's going to expand this audience using digital marketing tactics. So if you can generate qualified leads, these are the seeds from which to grow, right? So it, your audience will grow from those seeds however you generate them, offline or online, it doesn't matter, okay? However you generate them, all of this stuff will happen and you don't need to focus and worry, worry about it, you just need to get the qualified leads. If you cannot generate qualified leads, the website won't matter because nobody's using it. All right, it, it's, it's just nobody's using it. You need to have enough traffic and qualified leads on the site to actually make use of it. And you will be doing marketing to people, this is even worse, who will never buy, which is a waste of time. They're, they're never gonna buy. So you're just sending out emails and doing social media posts to people who will never buy. There's no qualified leads in there. You're totally wasting your time. And so many people right now who are listening to this are doing that because they've never focused on this one metric. They're not measuring it. So what do you do next? You set goals to grow this metric, all right? There's a famous saying, what gets measured gets improved. Famous saying in business. That's why you need to track this metric. If you actually track it and measure it, you're going to improve it. There, there's just a psychology behind that. And so what I want you to do next month is set a concrete goal to increase the amount of qualified leads, quality leads that you acquire compared to the previous month. Do this every month and never stop. Your future depends on it. When this number is growing, you know you are headed down the right track, okay? So if you ever wondered, am I headed down the right track? Is my business going in the right direction? Just measure this number and you will know whether your business is going down the right track or not. If it's not, make an adjustment, ask for help. This is the only metric that matters. The vast majority of your time should be spent doing this. I'm just reiterating this. If you're just starting out, this means 90% plus of your time should be spent generating qualified leads and measuring it, okay? So this applies to everyone. I don't, even if you're not starting out, the more time that you can spend generating qualified leads, the bigger your business is going to grow. You wanna get to a million dollars a year in sales, you're gonna have to generate a lot of qualified leads. The guys who are selling at that level are generating the most qualified leads. That's how they're getting there. So here's an example of what you could print out and or make yourself and post on your wall. I want this on your wall. I want something like this 
you know, on your computer screen, on your wall, wherever, on your mirror, you know, in your bathroom, wherever you're going to see it every day. Your focus is to get more qualified leads. It is not to do anything else. That's what you got to do today. You know, what, what are you going to do today to actually get some qualified leads? Have some goals this month, next month, the month after, try to double them, uh, try to keep them consistent. Distractions to avoid. Anything that does not bring in more quality leads, like tinkering with your website, SEO, media types, et cetera, um, those, are, those are distractions. They're not bringing in more quality leads. That's the number that's gonna actually do something. These, it, it doesn't matter if you're doing those things. No, not enough people are coming to your website anyway. You don't have enough qualified leads for any of these things to, to matter. SEO is, is like the most crowded space ever. Unless you were doing it in 2003 and 2004, you know, that's where the arbitrage was. That's when you actually could get an advantage there. I see so many people wasting their time on that when all that might do is get you a couple of sales a year, maybe, after, you know, hundreds of hours spent tinkering with, with your site in order to get that. Instead, there are way better tactics that, that are the 2003, 2004 of SEO that you can do today that are better. So create and follow a success list, not a to-do list, all right? Think about that every day. Like, is this just something I could do or is it actually something I should do? So only something, that's you, something you should do is something that's going to generate more qualified leads. I don't care if your website is broken. If you generate 50 more qualified leads today, you actually did way better for your business than you did if you had just sat there behind a computer and focused on it. And I'll give an example. I was speaking to a photographer the other day and he was telling me about his last six months. And, and, and I said, well, how many qualified leads did you generate? And it was a very small number. It was like, you know, maybe 20. And I said, you know, if I had you go down to downtown Austin and stand in front of Perry's Steakhouse, which is this really high end steakhouse and just stand out there and hold your art out in front of everybody that came out there, I bet you, you could generate more than 20 qualified leads in one day. You could have a fishbowl there. You could give a discount on the spot. You could have, you know, collecting business cards of people and everybody who's eating there is essentially qualified. And if they stop and in there, if they're interested in your work, then you probably got a qualified lead right there. You could do that in one hour at lunchtime or at, at nighttime and get more qualified leads in one day than you got in the last six months. And I just make that point. I don't, I'm not, I'm not saying to seriously do that, although you, you possibly could. I'm, I was saying that to get him thinking about all of the things that he could do to actually get qualified leads today, literally today, tomorrow, this weekend, even if you go, you go somewhere, you get five here, you get 10 there, you get a hundred here, you get 50 there. All right. If you follow the fishbowl technique for art fairs that we have, you can get, you know, sometimes a hundred leads in one day at an art fair that happens all the time to art storefronts members. And so that's the most important thing is to think about things that are actually going to get you that. Now you can try these things online as well, but if you are doing things like posting around and uh, you know, buying ads or things like that, and it's not generating qualified leads, then you're not helping yourself. You're literally not doing anything. So maybe there are other ways to generate quality leads that you can do and then, and then use the digital marketing tactics in order to amplify all of that, okay? So here's another story about uh, Bill Stidham that we were talking about right here. Now, he spent most of his career at the beginning doing a lot of different art fairs and shows and things like that. He went all around. Well, nowadays, he barely does them anymore because he's built such a following and, and, and got so many qualified leads. And then he did, he's done great marketing ever since, really consistent marketing, that his audience is constantly growing because he started with a base of qualified leads. So if you have good qualified leads and then you do really good marketing, those people will share your posts, they'll forward your emails, and it will amplify, it will grow your audience and, and consistently grow your audience. And then you'll have something really uh, consistent and, and, and that will, it, it'll turn into a machine that will generate sales. That's when you are truly manufacturing success. But it all starts by finding the qualified leads and focusing on this metric. So that's what I want you to do and, uh, and, and never stop. And recognize that whenever the number is not moving, there's a problem, okay? Or if it's not consistent, there's a problem there. You've gotta do more, you gotta come up with more ideas and, and, and try to grow the business uh, any way that you can. And that's it.
please go get more qualified leads. You know what to do. Thank you guys.